<laughs> Most black men and women are weak and evil. Do you do you agree with me about that? I I I think that if I were to agree with that statement, I'd be in trouble because of the color of my skin. I have with me Sargon of Akkad, and also known as Carl Benjamin. He is an English liberal YouTuber and a recent candidate for European Parliament. And uh, he was representing South West England. So, Sargon, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Should I call you Carl or Sargon? Carl's fine. Carl, okay. Uh, amazing. Thank you for coming on, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. I've been been a fan of uh, your interviews for quite some time, actually. I appreciate that. I've seen some of the critiques you have done with my show, uh, and you've done a very, very good job of laying it out. Well, thank you. Uh, is it true that you are a liberal? Yes. So if you are a liberal, how is it that you can understand my videos so well? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, it's because essentially your liberals are communists. Um, your Republicans are the real liberals, and over here they it has a different meaning. So I, I, I guess you would call me a Republican in America. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and, and the name Sargon of Akkad, where did that come from and what does it mean? Um, the, the Sargon of Akkad was uh, an ancient Mesopotamian emperor, and I just really happen to like the legend that goes uh, with the, the mythical or semi-mythical character of Sargon. And when, when I first started using the internet, I'm, I'm 40 now, so if we, if we went back like 20 years, when you, when you use the internet, you didn't tend to use your real name because the internet was new and nobody really knew where it was going. Right. And so everyone used pseudonyms, and that just happened to be the pseudonym I used. And I created my YouTube channel in like 2010, uh, but I didn't first upload a video until 2013. I just created the channel just so I could use YouTube, uh, the, the accounts that used YouTube. And when I first started uploading videos, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. So I didn't think to use my proper name or anything. And now I'm kind of <laughs> stuck with it. But it's okay. I can live with it. I, th I still quite like it. Right on. Are you surprised at uh, the, um, um, the growth of your YouTube channel? You got everybody and their mama joining and watching and a part of. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, I, I, I still... I, I just try not to think about it because when, if if I were to think about just the the sheer number of people who watch my videos, I'd probably be too afraid to actually put videos up because <laughs> I'd be like, oh God, is this good enough? And so I, I try not to think about it and just say what I think is uh, most accurately representative of reality. Right on. And I just you know, and if I make a mistake, I just correct myself. You know. Right on. You are an atheist. I am. And what does that mean to be an atheist for you? Um. For me, I don't, I, I suppose you'd probably put me closer to agnostic, really, because I don't have a definitive answer that there is or isn't a God, but I, I can't find myself believing in any of the sacred texts that I've read. And I've not felt a spiritual void in my own life because I was raised without irreligious. So I've got no particular desire to be religious or get involved with it, really. So for me, it's just something I just don't need. So if I'm uh, just to be clear for me, you you're not sure if there's a God or not. There might be one, but you're just not sure about it. Well, I mean, I don't I, I don't know what the ultimate origin of everything is. And so I I'm un, I'm uncomfortable with putting a firm sort of no, there definitely isn't, although I don't really believe that there is. And if there is a God, it's certainly not the way that it's described in the various sacred texts that we have. But um but I mean, I, it, it just isn't something that I spend my time worrying about, to be honest. So you're married and you have kids, right? Yep. And so what is it like being a husband, a father over your wife and your children? How what is it like um, being an example for your wife, trying to guide her in the right way, being an example for your children without a belief that there's a God in you guiding you? Um, well, I think that without any sort of deference to a higher power, it means that you're more responsible for your own actions. 
you can't ever ascribe saying you can't say that oh satan made me do it no you did it yourself and you have to take responsibility for that and i i do i'm a firm believer in personal responsibility and it's definitely the sort of um ethos i'm trying to pass down to my children so you believe that the things that you do wrong you are deliberately doing that well, sometimes, I mean, you know, so I mean, assuming you're not making an honest mistake, obviously, because a lot of the time it could be just through ignorance. But sometimes people do things wrong on purpose because of the passions, because they're upset about something and they, you know, they want to get back at someone or something like that. And I think that people do have to take responsibility for that. Yeah. So why would you at times do wrong to what your family or anyone and you don't want to, but you do it anyway? saying that you would never do it, but you do it anyway. Why would you decide to do that to your own family and to yourself? Well, I think that when people do that, what they're, what they're doing is allowing their emotions to run away with them. And they're not really taking full control over their own emotional state. And I don't blame them. I mean, no, you know, nobody's, nobody's in perfect control of their own emotional state. This happens to everyone. But I think that as you grow older, you learn to be more aware of how you personally are reacting to the, the various things that are happening to you. And I think that you can, you can gain a good sense of um, sort of self-ownership in this regard. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're a young person, you know, young men and women, you know, they act in ways that they end up regretting because they weren't thinking about what they were doing and they were just allowing their emotions to get the best of them. But I, I do think it's incumbent on us as we grow older to be more aware of what we're doing and make choices that are actually the right choices. So you said that some people allow their emotions to run away with them, right? I think so, yeah. And so where does, where did they get the emotion? Where did that come from that runs away with them and causes them to do things they wouldn't ordinarily to do or say things or act in a way they would? Where did that emotion come from and does that emotion control them? I would suggest that these emotions are just part of the human condition and they're inherent within us and... I mean, I'm not a psychologist, so I couldn't give you any more detailed uh, origin than that. But I think they're, they're a fundamental part of being human. And I think the real question is, are you going to be dominated by your emotions or are you going to dominate your emotions? And I think that it leads you to a, a more a reasonable and healthy and happier life. If you're not constantly at the whim of, of your own emotion, at the mercy of your own emotions, if you can get at least some kind of grip on why you're reacting in certain ways, then you can become the master of that. And I think that you become a happier person for it. So you believe that human beings can control their emotions at all times if they wanted to? Not at all times. I mean, every, everyone is, you know, they have, they have their moments when they're feeling down and the defenses aren't up and, you know, so, something gets to them. But uh, I think that on, our, on, on balance, more often than not, you can control your reaction to your emotions. That's amazing. Uh, emo <laughs> emotional people cannot be trusted. Emotional people are evil. I don't think I'd call them evil. I think I'd call them weak. Um, I don't think it's the same thing. Quite. But a weak person is an evil person. That's a very interesting perspective. I think evil, to, in, my, in my opinion, evil has more connotations of selfishness and malevolence than I would say weakness. Um, but I think the weakness can enable people to do evil. And all weak people are selfish people, and they are constantly trying to. I agree. They are constantly trying to get for themselves, whether in a yes. sneaky way or whatever. It's never about the other person. They're always thinking of themselves, trying to get something to cover up their weakness. Oh, I totally agree, and I think it's. Um, very selfish to allow yourself to become so weak to the point where, uh, and you see this with the left in America all the time, and it happens here too, where the, the, the activists and the academics will preach a message of weakness. And in, in for example, the, the case of pronouns, uh, they'll say, no, you all have to learn my pronouns because I'm too offended and triggered to hear you use a pronoun that I don't personally adopt. And I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. Now you've got to pacify the entire world around you and force them to do what you say because you're too weak just to hear a word that you didn't approve of. Yeah. I, I, think that's, I think that's ridiculous and dangerous and irresponsible, frankly. In this country, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most, <laughs> most black men and women are weak and evil. Do you, do you agree with me about that? 
I, I, I think that if I were to agree with that statement, I'd be in trouble because of the color of my skin. Um, but I, I do think there is... Why would you be in trouble trust... because of the color of your skin? Uh, because I would be ascribing uh, a, a negative state to a race is the way that it would be framed. But I do agree with you that there is... A but isn't dramatic... that a weakness? You're concerned about that, the color... Rather than it, the... it is, it, it is. I, 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 it is a weakness on my part, but I'm kind of bound by forces through which I can't control. By which I mean, like the gods of YouTube. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't believe it's because they're black either. I think right, that, it's the, not because they're black. Yeah, the implication would would come across sounding like I think it's because they're black, and I don't. I think it's because of the way the Democrats essentially pander to the black community, and they don't treat them as if they are moral agents of their own, and so they don't expect them to hold any responsibility for the actions they take. And if all the people around you are always telling you, well, you're not responsible for that, it's the, the white supremacy or the patriarchy, or whatever it is, then you're going to say, well, I didn't do anything wrong. In fact, I can't do anything wrong. Anything I do then is, is naturally good. So you can go around doing terrible things in the name of doing good. And if you've got a bunch of white leftists who are saying, oh, no, everything you do is perfect, of course they have a completely warped view of their own behavior. And I think that's what you're speaking to, isn't it? Right. But what were you? what's wrong with the blacks, though, that they fall for? When I was growing up, black, and I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. I don't know if you know about the Jim Crow laws over there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I grew up on a plantation. I was born there and grew up there. We didn't have that kind of mentality with all that going on. I wasn't even that much aware of it, to be honest, because of the family, the unity of the fa uh, family unity and character and working hard and not blaming. And we were not controlled by human beings. We, you know, we had our parents. What, yeah. What's wrong with the blacks, and I, I guess you can't say that because you don't want to be banned, but what's wrong with the blacks that they well, are allowing this to happen? They're human beings. Why are they allowing it to happen to them as individuals? Uh, honestly, I think, I think there's a combination of things. I think that um, black people in America do have a, a sad history, um, which is difficult to overcome. And if you're living sort of cheek by jowl with the, the people that you can point at and say it's your fault, then it's easy to pass along any personal responsibility for what happens in your life. So if you make a bunch of really bad decisions, uh, say, for example, you, you, don't, you drop out of school, you commit crimes, you deal drugs, you, you have children in, out of wedlock, you might have children with multiple different women, um, you can't really point to white people and say, white people made me do that. But if you've got a, an entire wing of the political system that's saying, oh, no, trust us, it's all white people that's making you do that, even if it's not obvious how they're doing it, it's their fault, then I think for a lot of people, it's more emotionally safe to sit there and say, well, see, I, you know, I wasn't responsible for these problems. These problems are happening to me. I, I bear no responsibility. And I think, I think that's sad. And I think that until the black community in America says, you know what? We actually don't need to be like that. We can actually just choose. I mean, this is why this is why I support Candace Owens and what she's trying to achieve. I like her framing of it rather than victim mentality. Have a victor mentality. I, I I really like that, and that's why I like Kanye West as well. I think he's on that path to saying, you know, what, I'm going to be Kanye West, and I'm going to be responsible for my own life. And if you look at Kanye Kanye West, I mean, he's successful. He's married. He's got children. He's a he's a present father. He's he is a good example to young black men. And so it's really annoying watching the sort of white liberals in the Democrats calling him names and saying that he's a bad person. He's a fantastic role model. What's the sad history that black people have to overcome? Well, the so I would say that most young men and most people, most most groups of people, most um, have something of a heroic narrative in their history. So um, you can go back to the Germans, and they have the, the Holy Roman Empire through the Middle Ages, they fought the Romans, you've got this series of her, uh, heroic points that you can plot a story with. And I think that the consequence of slavery in America is that the tribal links to the various actual tribes of Africa that black people were from were broken. And so this has left them only with the historical narrative that um, black people have been slaves. And so they they can't, it's very difficult to form a more positive self-identity when that's hanging over you. 
Um, I'm not saying I've got the answer to that either, but I think that's the problem. <laughs> well, why didn't I see that and my folks see that and the people I grew up around in Alabama see that because we grew up during this area of Jim Crow law. My great grandfather was uh, killed by somebody, some white folks doing it way back mm -hmm. when. But we were not affected by slavery or nor did mm -hmm. we have that mentality. That only came when the so-called civil rights movement started. And yeah. which was a big mistake. That should have never happened. But I, I, so, I, I think you've put your finger on it there, actually. I, I think um, what what you're speaking to is the strong family structures that you had. And you, were, you obviously had responsible parents who raised you well. Um, and I, I do think there are a lot of people in the black community who don't have responsible parents who raise them well now. Um, something like 72% of uh, black children are born yeah, out of wedlock now right so it's it's i mean that that's a catastrophe on any scale because there there are numerous studies this is a very well documented uh, area of research that shows that uh, single parent households uh, particularly young men and fathers that without fathers in the household there is i mean there's increase in poverty a decrease of iq the parenting is just hard as well if you're if you're a, a single woman then it's difficult to get a young boy under control because I think young men respond to the sort of aggressive voice of their father a lot more than they respond to the less sort of masculine voice of, course, of the mother and absolutely. things like this. Absolutely. So I got to ask then, so it's not a past history of slavery. It's a brainwashing that took place during the uh, so-called civil rights movement yeah, and, yeah. and the destruction of that family where the blacks turn their lives over to the so-called civil rights leaders and the government. So they lost that uh, identity of self and family. So it had nothing to do with mm. slavery or Jim Crow, but everything to do with the civil rights leaders and the Democratic government and the blacks turning their lives over to them. And bad family because most black people lack character. They don't, yeah. they're immoral people now. I, I I agree that I agree that the that there is a there is a deficit of character. Uh, when I said uh, when I was saying slavery and uh, Jim Crow, uh, what I meant was that's the that's the narrative that's given as a prepackaged uh, thing to black people now and say, look, any of your problems are not your fault there because of historical injustices. Right. But, I mean, uh, you're you're a great example that this isn't necessarily true. It's only true if you let it be true. And then you start making decisions that are bad decisions. You stop taking responsibility for your own uh, own mistakes and own successes. And suddenly you find yourself in a position where you actually can't really achieve anything because you don't know how to achieve anything. Whereas you obviously took the other path, which is much better, I think. When I was growing up, I love the pre-packed victimhood thing you just mentioned. When I was growing up, we were not into the black thing. I had I wasn't about mm -hmm. black being black, right? It was about being right. You know, yes. treated yeah. our uh, neighbors as ourselves, and we would treat anyone working hard, saving your money, getting married, mm -hmm. having a family, and just loving the country. It wasn't about the black thing at all, but as soon as the civil rights movement started, the blacks got into the black thing about being the color rather than the character, and just been down here. I got to ask you this because I have so much to mm. talk to you about. Are the blacks the same way over there? Are they like victims over there as well, pretending to be no, victims? No, actually. Well, one of, uh, one, I, I went to America for the first time in 2017, and one of the first things I noticed was that the black communities over there are actually not very similar to the black communities in England. Uh, most, most of the black people in England are just, just regular. You know, they, don't, they don't have a giant chip on their shoulder. We, the, the problem that we have, actually, is in the universities from America, we've got the same sort of ideology that's being imported. So they're essentially trying to teach pe uh, black people now that they are the victims of the British. And, I mean, that's a, an unfair narrative anyway. But, um, but they're trying to import that same kind of um, sort of enervating mentality. And I, I really think that people should try and resist that at all costs. Yes. Because I think it does ruin lives. It does. It absolutely does. Um, yeah. I have noticed that, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, that white people are the most hated people around the world today, and they are to they are being they are to are being blamed for every victim, no matter what color, where they came from, or how rich or poor they are. Whites are to blame for it. They are called white supremacists. They are called uh, white police brutality. All kind of crap. 
And especially white, straight, conservative Christian men of power, they are like totally hate it. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. and have you do you agree that most that white people are to blame that they are blaming white people and white people are the most hated people on earth? Uh, yeah, I really think that they are. I mean, at least in the West, I, I would have to you know go to these other countries and you know interrogate those beliefs. But in Western countries, certainly, and it comes from the the left wing view that the um, the Europeans were the winners of the historical game of empire, because if like the the name Sargon of Akkad, this the 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 historical figure was from Iraq, and he was the first proper emperor that we see in history. So he first creates a a giant empire across the Fertile Crescent. And since then, the history of humanity is just one group conquering another group. And the last group to do it were the Europeans. And that's where we find, find ourselves with the sort of rules-based um, global order that we have now, where it's not acceptable to just conquer other countries. Um, whereas prior to that, it was. And so it, it, essentially, the Europeans are the victims of their own success in this regard. And there's a huge amount of resentment out from the left, in fact, that essentially pathologizes them all as oppressors. And I just don't think that's true. I think that, I mean, for example, it was during the 19th century, the British spent about 100 years eradicating the slave trade. And I, I personally think that's an unimpeachable moral good. And so I don't think you can just say, well, the the, Brit the, you know, the, the British are oppressors or the Americans are oppressors. I mean, in America, you fought a civil war that left 600,000 people dead yeah. over it, you know? So... That you, you can't just say white people are bad. That's just not an, an accurate reading of history. <laughs> right. I've noticed in America, in my country, that the people who are hating, well, there are the blacks who were born here and, and, and who hate white folks, too, for some dumb reason, yeah. right? But I noticed that the people who are coming here, they're coming from S-hole countries, and they're coming to the greatest country in the world that was yeah. founded and created by white people. It's yeah. not like they're coming from great countries into a bad country, right? But they're coming it's, it's, here and they're attacking the very people who have made it possible for them to come here and say, and, and they'll make a statement like, you're depressing me, you're suppressing me, you're this. I, I, don't, I don't get that. People like Ilhan Omar, right? Yeah, like she, she's. I mean, as if as if Somalia is any better in any way than the United States. That's, and a, yet she has lots of criticisms from the United States, but no criticisms of Somalia. That's right. When I become president, she's going to be the very first one I ship back to Somalia, wherever she came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, tell, I, I will support your bid. I tell you. <laughs> so, what is it like as a, a white man? You're white, right? Well. Uh, yeah, but in, in Europe, it doesn't really have any meaning because everyone's white. Basically. Oh, I see. So, so you, you, it's the, the, nas the nation is more important than the skin color. So what, do you, you, what is it like to be white and knowing that you hate it for something you had nothing to do with? You open up your country, you let the people in. What is it like to be white and knowing... And, and knowing that you hate it for no reason. Well, it, I'm not going to lie. It is quite frustrating, especially as I, I grew up in the 1990s. So we grew up very much with the, the concern about the content of a person's character. Right. And the, the rule was that you didn't judge people by the color of their skin. And you didn't ascribe to them things you personally hadn't done, because obviously if you didn't do it, you're not in control of it. Um, so it, it's very frustrating to, it, since about 2010, see this, this moral system totally inverted. And so now we don't care about the, piece, the, the content of a person's character. We actually only care about the color of their skin yeah. and the guilt by association that we can ascribe to them. Um, I'm, I'm very much against this. I think this is deeply immoral and like evil, as, as you might say. Yes. Um, I, actually, I think this is terrible. It's, it's very frustrating. But I think the important thing is to not fall into the trap of saying, well, if they're doing it, well, I'm going to do it too then. Because then it's just an eye for an eye and we'll, we'll all end up blind. What is wrong? I'm not, I see it a lot now all around me. I'm not accustomed to seeing men be weak and cower down to intimidation and name calling and things like yes. that. What is wrong with the white straight? I understand the homosexuals can't speak up because they're so girly, right? But what is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with the straight white conservative man that cannot and will not speak up? What's holding him back? 
Um, I think I've, I think these days the problem is that it's it's actually quite totalitarian. It's in every aspect of your life can be affected by the activists who will target you. And if you're if you're just some random person working in an office or something, and you speak out of turn, you'll find yourself with a very well organized um, and very aggressive lobby for the radical left politics that will try and get you fired from your job they'll just try and get you know turfed out of where you live they'll go after your family and your friends they, they will attack all aspects of your life and for an individual who's just seeing something that and wants to speak about it that's a very intimidating prospect you know because they'll feel that they're isolated that they have no support they're at risk of losing their income so i can i can see why people would be afraid of speaking up but i I, I do think that it's that fear of being singled out that is the problem. And honestly, we all have to essentially stand up and do it together and say, look, we're not we're not going to accept this and you can't treat us this way. I, while growing up, I was accustomed to seeing men put character, put the soul before material things, whether it was a job or a house or a car or whatever, money. Mm -hmm. They would put the character first, the man would. And yeah. why have men sold out to put material things before the character? Because when you're a man of character and God is with you and all things are possible, you can, you know, you know, things are got, you've got to be fine and you're unwilling to sell out what is right over material things. Why did that switch and how? It's it's a very good question, and I'm not sure I've got the answer to it. But there is there is definitely it is as you say. I think there is definitely a lack of character that's bred into young people these days. So as they grow up, they are encouraged to be consumers, just to be materialistic. I mean, I've never actually been a very materialistic person, so I've never found myself like worried that I won't be able to buy a new set of trainers. Right. And so I would I would rather speak out about things that I'm personally. I personally consider, and in a way, you could you could frame them as spiritual injustices. And this this lack of character, I think, is honestly part of a kind of sickness that's at the heart of the West at the moment. And I don't know what the, necessarily what the answer is to overcome it, but we really have to start thinking about that. Which is more important, to lose the soul and gain the world, or to get, uh, lose the world and gain the soul? Which is more important? Um. I'm not sure what you mean by gain the soul, but if, and I, I don't want to speak necessarily in religious terms because they're not ones that I'd necessarily relate to. Right. But if, if for when, when you say gain the soul, what I would say, uh, what I interpret from that is have possession over oneself. Yes. So you're not dominated by things outside of you. Absolutely. You are in control of yourself and you, you know what you want and why you want it. And I think that this kind of self-possession is more important than all of the money in the world. If you don't have that, yes. then you'll never be happy. That's right. Absolutely. I know and I read that you've been attacked. You've uh, been banned. You yeah. uh, 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 I mean, let, let me, I wrote it down so I can be sure to ask you. You were, um, you were banned by Patreon, I believe? That's correct, yeah. You, uh, you were, were you banned from Twitter as well? That's correct, yeah. And they call you hate speech, right? They say you're a yes. hateful person. What has that been for you and how are you doing? How are you dealing with all that? Oh, um, fortunately, I wasn't reliant on these platforms. Um, I don't. I mean, they call everything hate speech, so I'm not particularly worried. I mean, I was banned from both of those platforms because I was insulting Nazis. I mean, at, you know, actual sort of, you know, fascist activists. So I'm not worried about their moral judgments. And I'm, I, luckily, I wasn't reliant on those platforms. Uh, the, the main platform that I use is YouTube. So um, that's the one that I need to be able to stay on. And thankfully, I still am. So I, uh, I try and keep myself a bit, bit, more, a bit more in the straight and narrow when it comes to words these days. Amazing. It, are you referring to Antifa? I noticed that over here, Antifa. You, have you ever heard of Antifa? I've been attacked by Antifa. Oh, they are like radical, evil. Uh, they are so evil, they hide their faces when they go to attack. Absolutely. And, They're communists. Which says to me that you know they're up to no good, right? But yep. yet they are promoted as good. And so they're fighting yep. some good fight. Whereas the white guys who go out and defend the country or whatever, they are not hiding their faces. Yep. They're standing up for what is right. They're the one being called, the, uh, uh, being treated worse than Antifa. Why is that? 
Uh, it's because the press, are the, the, the it's, it's usually the media that's sympathetic to Antifa, and many of the democratic politicians, actually. And it's because, frankly, I think that ideologically they are sympathetic to communism, if not outright communists themselves. I mean, you'll, you'll see, like, um, did you see Stephen Crowder had a problem with Carlos Maza from Vox. Uh, Carlos Maza is just a, a Marxist. He's a communist. He, he says it in his videos. He admits it on his Twitter profile. He's, he's a communist. And so when Antifa, who are also communists, start attacking the Republican patriots or something like that in the streets, well, of course, he, they side with the communists because they're their ideological brothers. Amazing. What is it like seeing people reject uh, the truth in favor of victimhood? When you see that, what is it like for you? Uh, personally, I think it's quite pathetic. Yeah, it made me even, want to throw up. Yeah, I think it's disgusting. I, I, like, I even, even if I was in a terrible accident and I lost my legs or something, I wouldn't <laughs> want to think of myself as a victim because I think when you start falling into that mindset, you're essentially giving up and saying you've been defeated. And I, I think that's terrible. I think that that's essentially the end of your own autonomy. And I, I think that you should resist that at all costs. Were you surprised when you were banned from Twitter and Patreon? It seemed to have brought out people like um, Jordan Peterson, Dave mm -hmm. Rubin, Sam Harris, and all those guys. They came to the forefront. Were you surprised that that came out of that? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't expect to be banned from Patreon because I didn't actually violate their rules. They, they, they've got a, prin uh, a principle they operate under called manifest observable behavior. And Jack Conte, when he was on Dave Rubin's show, was very clear it has to be on our site. And I didn't do anything on their site. I didn't even do it on my own YouTube channel. It was on someone else's stream. So I was quite surprised. It seemed very unfair. And I thought it was um, very noble of Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin, among others, to come forward and say, look, we think this is wrong. And honestly, I was I was d deeply touched by everyone who spoke out in my defense. I really was. Yeah, just for those who might not know, they, they quit Patreon as a result of what happened to you. I know. Just imagine, just imagine how great the world would be if people stood together like that and fought against yeah. evil. You know what I'm saying? It would yeah. be, we would be better off that way if people stood together like that. That was very noble well, that, of them to stand up like that. I, I think so. And that's how you can, that, that's how you can be sure that they're men of good character. Yeah. Whereas the, the people, the, the thing is people who don't approve of the political message that I have, um, they should still have in principle said, well, this is what, what you've done to him there is wrong because he didn't violate your terms of service, because your terms of service don't include things that he does off your platform. And it wasn't even on my own platform. So the, the idea that this they had ownership of that is a huge reach. And, in, and, and this is how you could tell the people of good character, because those are people of good character who, who disagree with me, but are good faith actors, would, would turn around and say, no, I don't think you should have been deplatformed there. The people who are cheering for me being deplatformed, well, they're the, they're the weak ones. Yes. I, I don't care. I'm, I don't care what color the person is. I don't care if they're male or female. I'm on the side of what is right. Yes. When you're right, you're right. When you're wrong, yeah. you're wrong. And I am against wrong. You know what I mean? I, I want to oh, yeah. ask, is everyone white except Middle Eastern and Muslim and Africans? Sorry, sorry say again. is everyone white except Middle Eastern, Muslim and Africans? Yeah, over there. Uh, no, I, I would, I because would say you said that they everyone was white earlier, right? In our conversation. Oh, uh, in, in Europe, yes. like mo most people are white, in oh. Europe, obviously. Um, cause where white people come from, uh, but no, <laughs> you're like, you know, M Middle Easterners, Africans, uh, the, no, these, these aren't white Europeans. No. Um, is it bad to be white nowadays? Well, there's there's certainly the popular opinion among uh, progressive activists that it's bad to be white, and you see a lot of them posting on Twitter how they hate being white because that makes them racist and oppressive, and all these other things that, that are just absurd to ascribe to themselves. I, I I feel bad for them. What is a man? Uh, a man is not something that you are born into. A man is something you have to become. Uh, it's it's a certain kind of uh, character development that men that males have to grow into from becoming boys into men um i do i do think this is not something that every 
male achieves. Not every boy really grows into a man, and then they end up going and working for BuzzFeed. Um, <laughs> so it's it's something you have to struggle to become, I think. And I think it's something you have to hold your head up ha proudly about. I don't think I think it's a set of standards that you have to adhere to as an example to younger men and younger younger boys, so they can also become men. I I uh, designed a T-shirt that says it's okay to be a man. I, and That's a good yeah, you could get it on my Teespring thing there at rebuildingaman.com, rebuildingaman.com. But I noticed that men don't like being men. I love being a man. It just yeah. so I don't know how you give up your. And I know that we are all at some point in a fallen state, right? But and so you're not sure where you're going or what's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah. you need to overcome. Matter of fact, I have a TV show called The Fallen State TV. You know about that? The Fallen State I'm aware TV. Of it, yeah. 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 And I noticed that men are afraid to be men. They think that they have to talk and act like a woman. They have to be emotional like a woman. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like they're afraid to be themselves. Have you noticed that? I have noticed. I, I even I, I watched um what was it a TED talk uh, yesterday, and I found this very interesting. This is something I've only just learned, but uh, apparently, uh, birth control pills encourage uh, make women feel like they want uh, to date men who are less manly. <laughs> and so if you if you're a man, you've got lots of testosterone. You have like you know big beard, a square jaw, you know big shoulders, and if a woman has lots of estrogen, she'll find that very attractive. But the birth control pills reduce the amount of estrogen in the woman's system. And so she'll find more manly men less attractive. And so she'll go for less manly men. And so those men who have got less testosterone in their, in their bodies, that, that will be more attractive to the women who are on birth control. And when a lot of women are using birth control, it could be this is a kind of self-selecting mechanism where women tend to go for less manly men and therefore men become more effeminate as part of a strategy to get mates. <laughs> Have, do so it you, could be the pill that's doing this. <laughs> I I have said, and I absolutely believe, and I have no doubt about, that any man that has anger is a woman. That is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I see where you're going with this. I think it's very interesting. <laughs> it's abnormal for a male to have anger. And what happens is that when they are born, if they're born with a mother, from a mother that is angry, and either at the father or at her father or her mother made her that way, become, you become like what you hate. Whomever mm -hmm. you're angry at, you become like them. And I've noticed that these mothers are coming from angry mothers, and they are passing that anger on to their children. And so the boys are growing up with, and the girls too, but the boys are growing up with the same because they become like their mothers. They're yeah. growing up with the same personality that their mothers have. And because no one is correcting it, they think that it's normal. They don't know that it's you become like your mother and then you're attracted to women who are just like mama. And that's why you can't handle them. They, the boy become the in the relationship, the man become the boy and the girlfriend or wife or living become the mother. They don't know that it's abnormal to be angry and that they can overcome it by forgiving their mother for what they've done. Do you disagree with I, that? No, I, I think you're actually hitting a nail right on the head there. And I think that a lot of people are really quite afraid to talk about that because I think what you're talking about is the consequence of single parent fatherless households. Yes. Um, I, I, I totally agree with you when you characterize being a man as having self-control. I think that that's important. Right? Yes. Man, this is what I was saying earlier about letting your emotions get get the best of you and get away with you. Uh, you've got to rein them. You've got to be in control of those. And I think that a part of being a man is learning to do that. And I think that a lot of young men aren't in that frame of mind, which is why young men are often the ones causing fights and getting into trouble and smashing things up because they they have not been taught by their fathers or a father figure. And they are acting like women. Yeah, well... well that, yeah, they're, they're, they're at least not in control of themselves, <laughs> and they should be. A man is supposed to be logical and yes. not emotional. A woman is emotional, but the man role in life given to him by God, I believe in God, yeah. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, mm -hmm. woman over children. And the man's role is to help the woman overcome that emotional hell that she's going through. But if he's emotional too, he cannot help her. I agree. I think that I think that there is 
I think that it's it's a stereotype that women are emotional for a reason because let's be honest, they are more emotional than men. Oh generally. yeah, and I and I agree with you that if if a man is not in control of his own emotions, he can't. He's not in a position to help anyone be right. in control of their emotions or lead lead as a good example, and that's what you should. I'm running out of time, so I gotta ask you this. And then I have something that I thought was quite funny. I don't know if you would okay. think it's funny, but I did. Um, I read that the people in Europe have given up their guns. Is that true? Actually, no, it's not true. Oh. Is, there's, a, there's a common misconception about England that we don't have any guns here. Uh, that's not true. We, we don't have handguns, um, which, I, I mean, you can be for or against, but it's been done for pragmatic reasons because most, most murders are handgun murders you know um but we we have rifles and shotguns and things that are used for hunting and shooting in the countryside uh the it is quite difficult to get one though the restrictions are quite uh the 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 licenses to get one is it's quite tough to get but it's not it's not beyond the realms i mean there's something like half a million guns in the country something like that but who gives other people or who gave other people the right in your country to tell you that you can't have a handgun you're a grown I'm, adult I, male. You should be able to have whatever I, gun you want to. I, I agree with you completely. And when I came to the United States uh, time before last, I managed to shoot a 50 cal. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm actually, I was, it was amazing. Yeah, well. amazing. I had such a good time. No, it was. It really was. Um, but I, I agree with you in principle. But uh, I'm going to guess that it's the socialists that stop us from having guns. Uh, I'd have to look it up. I'm not familiar, but I'm going to guess it's, it's, it's the left wing thinking that they can use the government to engineer society and fix everyone's problems, which so, I don't think they can. So there was a, a, a knife killing on the London Bridge the other day was. by yeah. one of the Allah U Abba folks. Uh, That's true. And so will they ban knives now? Well, I'm sure they're trying to. They're probably having a knife amnesty as we speak, where they, they have bins around London. You can dump your knives in there this week. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they they don't they're not interested in addressing the underlying problem which is the desire to kill people because a means of killing someone can be you know a, you can pick up any heavy object and assault someone with yeah the the, the the like republicans always say and they are correct when they say this the gun doesn't kill someone it's the will behind the gun that kills someone it's the person pointing it for a reason absolutely you know, it, it, it and it's it's completely true and Knives are, and one, one thing that people forget as well is that knives aren't, they don't alert people in the same way that a gunshot alerts people. When someone fires a gun, everyone for a few hundred meters around can hear that. Yes. But if you stab someone, you might not know that someone's been stabbed. And so someone else gets stabbed and you, this could go on for quite a few times before people are aware that, oh God, we're under attack because it doesn't make a noise. So it's, it, knives are very dangerous weapons and there are dozens of stabbings each month in London because of uh, knives and so uh, because of gangs using knives sorry so it's it's not a solution it's not a solution uh, I agree so real fast hmm. something else just popped in my mind I gotta ask you about uh, yeah. in uh, South Africa mommy Africa uh, white people the blacks have taken over over there yeah. And now they have, uh, and they are enslaving the white people, right? And they are taking their guns. Yeah. I mean, they are land without compensation. They yeah. are murdering, robbing, raping. Yeah. They're just doing anything they want to do to the white folks. And there is no outcry about it at all. Are you concerned that that's going to happen in Europe and America? He in America, um, but South Africa, I've, I believe that the European descended population is somewhere like eleven percent of the population, and so there's 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 a of a large fringe minority called the economic freedom fighters, uh, but they're not, they're they're essentially driving the agenda, which is um, essentially hatred of white people and land appropriation from them. Yeah, and this environment also is the is, is responsible for all of the farm murders. And if anyone doesn't know what's going on in South Africa, I recommend they look it up. Uh, just search farm murders South Africa on yeah. Google. You'll find it. I mean, the, the the murders are the most brutal, just medieval things you've ever seen. And it's clearly out of passion for revenge. It's it's horrific. Yeah. The actual, the, the things that are being done are just, I mean, it's, it's like a horror movie. 
Well, and ironically, like a horror movie. Uh, whenever, whenever anyone asks me about South Africa, I say, well, look, if you if you're of European descent, just leave, just just leave. It's just too dangerous. They they're going to they're going to kill you. So and, and there is can. no world outcry about it. I don't hear it on the media. No. I don't hear it anywhere for the most part. Is it yep. because it's happening to the whites and no one cares? Yes. Yes, it's a, it's because it's happening to Europeans and that nobody cares. That, that's, that's amazing exactly it. to me. It's horrific. It's horrific. But there's there's very little we can do because no one will care. No no one wants to do anything about it because it's too politically incorrect. You can't say that there are black people in South Africa that are murdering white people because they're white, because then white people would be the victim of these black people, and that kind of turns the narrative on its head. And so they just don't talk about it. That's amazing. I'm concerned that that's going to happen in America because the whites are afraid over here, and they're voting in all type of colored people, and the colored people hate white folks. And as soon as they take over the government, I believe, unless something changes, they're going to take the land from the whites here in this country. They're going to murder them, rape them, and rob. And it's already happening in a small way. I believe that as the people of color take over the government, it's only going to get worse, and we're going to have South Africa in America. Well, I, I mean, I, I think you're a very, very, very long way from anything like that happening, thank goodness. You um, have been to America lately. I, I have. I know I have. I've been to America. Uh, but d don't give up your guns. That's what I would say. That's don't, for sure. Don't take your guns. Yeah, that's for sure. So my last thing, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've been told and I read it. As a candidate, you told a, a leftist female politician by the name of Jess Phillip. <laughs> yeah. And I quote, I wouldn't even rape you. And, that's 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 true. Yeah. And then later you clarified that you might rape her, but nobody got that much beer. Yeah. Nobody the, got that much comedy video. That was so funny, man. I, <laughs> Thank, you. I, 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 Thank you so much. I was cracking up when I read that. It was so <laughs> nice to hear to read it. Well, it was it was uh, the whole thing is kind of a long running sort of joke almost. Yes. Where it, essentially, uh, like it was saying, look, if if I say I wouldn't do something, you'll say that I'll do something because what they were trying to do is put in restrictive uh, speech laws across the internet in Britain, and all it was just to show that look, you'll just you'll just interpret it as the exact opposite message right. for political convenience. And then they started they kept going on about it. So I was like, well, if you're going to keep going on about it, I'm going to keep making jokes about it. <laughs> and they got even more offended by these jokes it's like well just shut up then you know I, i'm not bringing it up now you're the one who's bringing it up so if you want to keep bringing up an old joke we can keep going with it i'm not bothered but you know you guys are i loved it when you said well i might rape you but there's not enough beer <laughs> there really isn't <laughs> it's been amazing talking to you carl thank you so much i've totally enjoyed it how can people get listen to you keep up with what you're doing Right. Um, well, I have a new YouTube channel called ACAD Daily, a a -K -K -A -D Daily, um, and you can just Google that and find that quite easily, I think. So is there, what's the solution to all this? Bringing the, uh, the world back to a sense of love and peace and bringing men back to their natural state of being. What's the solution to all this? I don't think I have the sort of one true solution, but I think that the that w the uh, a step that will put us on the right path at the very least is to take responsibility for the things we do yeah. and actually be concerned about the things that are in our local area. Because you'll notice that the left at the moment talks very much in grand narratives. They're big schemes. You know, that if if just give them enough control over everyone's lives and they can fix the world, um, that's that's wrong. They can't. We know they can't because the 20th century is full of hundreds of millions of dead people who died in the attempt to do that. Uh, don't worry about fixing the world. And uh, Jordan Peterson is very much correct in this. Fix the space around you first. You know, make sure that the area around you is is orderly, safe, you know, well, well managed. And then at least a little bit of the world will be a better place to live. And if your neighbor does that too, then that'll be a better place to live. And I think that Eventually, we can make the world just generally better if we all just do our little part in our local area. I think that's a much more safe way of doing things. You know what my solution is? No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> my solution is that they must be men must be born again. They need to yeah. overcome mama and return yes. to the fathers 
and through the fathers, they can return to their natural state of being because the power is in the man, the love is in the man. And when men uh, come back to their natural state of being, then the world has to come back to order. So it's in I, the man. I agree. I agree. It's in the men. I, I, I totally agree. I think I think that young uh, boys, young men need to become men. Uh, yeah. They, they can't just it, it's a, a way of sort of um, absconding on their duties. And I think they do have a duty. To do it, if you so. want to destroy a family, a, a country, yeah. a nation, a world, you have to destroy the man first and then you yeah. can take out the women and children. Yeah. Yeah. Then then they're at your disposal. And do you want that? You know, Absolutely. That's terrible. Carl, thank you, man. I enjoy that. Thank you so much. We'll talk again. I'd love to. All right, buddy. Thanks for, thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Amazing. I'm going to get to your calls, folks, at 888-7753-773. Jesse, that was Sargon of Akkad, also known as Carl Benjamin, an English liberal YouTuber and a recent candidate for a European parliament representing Southwest England. I didn't mean to go on that long. I just wanted to talk to him for a few minutes, but it was so good, I couldn't help myself. Don't blame it on me. I couldn't help it. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.